I know that this is a head and neck channel, but the cervical spine is in the neck, so we're okay, right? I'm going to show you two patients with two different diseases in the cervical spine that might be easily confused and see if you can tell what the two diseases are. Here's patient one and here's patient two. They both arrive with the same clinical history, trauma. This is an MRI for trauma. So I encourage you to pause the video right here and look at these two patients and see if you can figure out what the diagnosis is in these two cases. Okay, first, what do they have in common? What we're seeing here is abnormal T2 signal within the central cervical spine, and you can see that there's abnormal T2 signal in front and behind the spine in both of these circumstances. So what are the differences between these two cases? Here we are seeing widening of the disc space and abnormal angulation. It's too triangular, not flat like the other disc. It's too wide in front. Whereas in this patient, the disc space is collapsed. Loss of disc space, but still abnormal T2 signal all the way around. Does that help you? Does that narrow your differential diagnosis? Well, I have a confession to make. I've been withholding the post-contrast images from patient number two. Again, you can see the collapsed disc space here, but the axial post-contrast adds additional information. We can see the abnormal enhancement along the perivertebral soft tissues, the longus coli muscles here, abnormally thickened and enhancing. We can see abnormal enhancement in the ventral epidural space here along the dura. We can see abnormal enhancement within the neural foramina. This extensive enhancement is the result of infection. This is a discitis osteomyelitis with collapse of the disc and abnormal enhancement, that is infection in the surrounding soft tissues. Going back to the sagittal T2 weighted images, this is a classic traumatic ligamentous disruption. The anterior longitudinal ligament is disrupted. We've got a fracture line through the disc space, and we've got disruption of the posterior interspinous ligaments here. This infection looks a lot alike. Abnormal signal in front, abnormal signal in the interspinous region. But here, the effect on the disc is very different. Here we have disc collapse and, of course, the enhanced -ish, uh, images that I withheld. I was being honest about the histories, though. Patient number two did come in with a history of trauma that, that brought him into the emergency department, and yet the final diagnosis was infection despite that history.